Oh, you want to bring this in, Mark? Take it to number 50. All right, yeah, we'll change it up since it's... Yeah, go ahead whenever you're ready, buddy. All right, so uh, we are back. <laughs> do it the way you do it. Uh, so episode number 50 today. Congrats, buddy. Yeah. It's only taken us two years to do 50. Exactly. We're on a, uh, a good pace. Yeah. Um, yeah, so today's guest from Skype. We got uh, the violent Bob Ross himself, Luis, Luis or Luis Pena. I hope I'm not saying it wrong, but Luis, yeah, no, Luis, okay. Luis Pena, Luis Pena, Pena. I don't know. How violent to... Bob Ross. Yeah. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks, thanks guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. You know, uh, especially like being a part of the AK family. It's really cool for me. Yeah, that, that's awesome, man. And and I want to get into that too, like how you got to AK. Obviously, you were an Ultimate Fighter with Daniel Cormier, um, but. But I guess before that, what 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 got you started in, in the sport in general? Like you're 26, you just had a birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, uh, I actually so I started out uh, fighting at 20 um, when I was as an amateur and everything. And uh, the way I got into it, um, one of my teammates on the Ultimate Fighter, Bryce Mitchell, actually was getting ready for one of his last like <laughs> amateur fights. He was going up against this dude that was supposed to be like this really highly touted college wrestler. And uh, I was like one of the better wrestlers from our area in Arkansas. And uh, one of my old high school rivals was like training with him and just hit me up one day and asked me if I would come in and help him out. And so I came in and the rest is kind of history. You know, I just kind of stayed. I, uh, I, I just loved it. And then uh, I moved around at a couple of different gyms between uh, in Arkansas. And then I ended up moving to uh, St. Louis about three years ago. And I spent um, three years living at a gym in St. Louis, you know, making my way up. It's actually the first, the same gym Tyron Woodley got his start at. Okay. And uh, from there, um, you know, I, I just worked really hard. I, like I said, I actually lived there in the gym. You know, I was living in this room. It's probably like the size of most people's closets. And... Um, I was just grinding. I saw my opportunity to make it on the Ultimate Fighter, and I took it. And they just—I I ran with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's awesome, man. And mm-hmm. it's crazy how many Ultimate. You were in episode. I mean, uh, uh, season what? Twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah. Twenty seven. Season twenty seven. <sighs> That makes me feel really old, man. There's, there's been 26, <laughs> 26 seasons of that show since I was 24. I was 24 on that show, and there was 26 seasons since then. That's yeah, but crazy. They do two seasons a year, so it's not like But still, man, that's 70, crazy, huh? I think you're our first uh, guest that's been on The Ultimate Fighter, right? Um, Took us 50 seasons. Seems like that's not accurate, but, I mean, I can't think be. of anyone. I don't know. Unless it was one of the – definitely I coaches. I was 24 but, when I was on The Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Is it so? Then, yeah, then you went. Be, so was it because of Cormier you went to after him being your coach? Is that why you went to AKA? Uh, not necessarily just because of DC. Um, I actually hit it off more with the coach with his coaching staff, like uh, Rosendo, Leandro, Duran, um, Coach Hob. You know, all of them. Like we all just hit it off really, really well. Uh, especially me and Rosendo, like I, uh, especially since the the show, me and him have like really built a, a special relationship. But you know, I hit it off so well with all of them. Um, and then coming back home, I just knew I needed to, I needed uh, something more. I needed to be pushed harder uh, if I was going to really sustain like an, an actual UFC career. So it was easy to, to for me to make the move um, after the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's awesome. And then, uh, yeah, I saw a video recently. I think it was on uh, AK's Instagram or something like that with Javier. Or, or, yeah, Javier was kind of uh, correlating a, a little tiff between you and DC. DC was busting your balls with Rosendo, and uh, it was something like that. You were sitting on the oh, side. Yeah, yeah. So how, how, is, yeah, it, man, how right. is it with DC? Because he's always busting people's balls, and like it seems like things don't change. I, I was watching the video, and I was like, man, that's just that brings me back to AK right there. Oh, no, no, nothing's changed. And I think that's honestly, that's why I, I fit in so well here. It's just because that's the way I am, you know. That's, that's the kind of guy I am. I'm, I like to bust people's balls. I don't mind like getting mine busted, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, uh, it, it feels like uh, like home, you know what I mean? It feels like I'm with my family, just like uh, conversating with them, just because just how, how comfortable everyone is with each other and how open everyone is with each other. Like, no one gets their feelings hurt. No one is... Uh, no, no one gets butt hurt over any of that stuff, and that, that's the that's the biggest thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Is like just being around guys like that that we can have fun with. You know what I'm saying? We can go out and have a good time. But at the same time, when it comes down to it, 
we're all there to push each other and chase the same dream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you, man. So let's go back to the very beginning. Like, what was the very first martial art you got into? I mean, you were you were a wrestler, obviously. Was that the first thing that you did, kind of in combat sports? Oh, without a doubt. I never, uh, like, I never did any like traditional martial arts or any striking or anything growing up. And uh, I was about 13 when I started wrestling. And I remember um, I was I was always a huge, huge fan of you of the UFC and MMA in general, but. Um, like, I remember even my senior year of high school, I won state, and I had this notebook that I would write in all the time uh, to just to get my mind and my thoughts out. Um, and I told myself, like, I might take an MMA fight one day just to see if I could do it. Like, this was never really, like, a, the dream for me growing up. I just remember, um, like I said, you know, I went in there to help this dude get ready for a fight, and then slowly but surely, like, I just started to really fall in love with everything else, uh, with all the other aspects of it. Like, cause like you, you can't learn everything in wrestling, but at the same time you can kind of develop your style and, and get to this point where you feel like you're stagnating. And then I got into MMA and it's just like, you can never stop learning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I learned stuff today and still as old as I am just watching these people train. So how did you like, obviously like in the NBA, you can't give yourself a nickname, you know, but it seems like MMA, it's okay. Where did you get, I mean, obviously the look of, well, except for right now, but when you have that fro working, yeah, right. what, uh, how did you get that nickname? Who gave it to you? So, uh, I was actually getting ready for my fourth professional fight and it was on a uh, flow combat. They, they were going to be the ones like, uh, broadcasting it. And, you know, just to promote the fight, they had tweeted out a bunch of pictures of me. And I guess some fan was like, who's Violent Bob Ross, or who's Bob Ross's <laughs> son here about the fight? And then Flo Combat tweeted back, that's not Bob Ross's son, that's Violent Bob Ross. And I was like, ooh, I like the sound of that. And I just kind of took it and ran with it. Nice. That's good, man. What was your nickname before? Uh, I was <laughs> Young Metro before that because... Uh, but uh, there's a there's a whole thing about that. So there was like this that was the name going around. Young, um, is it because like, of the way you dressed? Was, no, 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 no. There's a whole story behind it. Um, there was this meme going around uh, at the time, and um, it's about it's like this uh, music producer in the rap game right now. And so, like, like his intro is like, if Young Metro don't trust you, I'ma shoot you. And so, like, the meme was like they were just changing all the different like. If Young Metro don't trust you, I'm going to do whatever to you. So, like, I told me and my best friend, I was like, dude, if I take it, because I had a fight right around then, I was like, if I take this guy out in the first round, I'm just going to snatch the mic from this uh, this local promoter who's kind of, like, known for being, like, a like talking a lot and everything. I was like, I'm going to just snatch the mic from him and be like, that's what happens when Young Metro don't trust you. And I did it. Like, no way. He didn't think I was going to do it. I took the dude out in the first round. I just and like he comes up to me to like to, to give me like the old interview and I just snatched it and went went hard, <laughs> dropped the mic and walked out and like the thing was it never would have been a thing if he didn't pick the mic up and just start like berating me as I was walking out. <laughs> like it would have never been this thing that turned into that. But it became such a huge thing in Saint Louis where I was from where I was fighting at and uh like people just started calling me on Metro. It was no, nothing I ever did. But I remember before, and that was like before I really started growing my hair out. But then, like the Violent Bob Ross thing, completely eclipsed everything, like any any nickname I've ever had before. Yeah, I like it. No, that was good for sure. Yeah. It's interesting with your background, not having traditional martial arts uh, in the striking aspects, because your 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 style is is very. Uh, I like your style. I, I like I like the pressure that you keep um, and your kicks and things like, like you, you you have such good striking for someone that d you know didn't have that that beginning. You know, so it's it's interesting that that you learn that as you. When, when do you think you picked up the the biggest um, boost in your striking? Um, without a doubt, I I have to give. Uh my striking, I, I definitely have to give uh, a credit to where I first started, Westside MMA in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, my original boxing coach, Boris Washington, and then I had a really, really good MMA coach, Matt Hamilton. Both of them guys, um, they kind of sat me down and told me, like, look, kid, you're going to have you're gonna have to learn the fundamentals before you want to get into this. And so, like, for six months, I was just doing like the most boring, basic boxing drills and stuff like that. But it gave me such a good foundation to build off of that, um, like once I started working with coaches and started teaching me more intricate stuff, 
I already had like a decent foundation of fundamentals. Like I, I'm, I've always been, uh, be, and because of them, and, that, and that's because of them, you know what I'm saying? Like I've always been the guy that like, I keep my hands up. I've all, I'm always thinking about my defenses. I'm always thinking about slipping punches or something after I throw or countering after I get hit. And that's because of them, um, without a doubt. Yeah, and you got good posture too. <laughs> as a side note, like I like your posture when you move forward, and when you keep that pressure on people, especially as tall as you are, you know it's imposing to have that kind of posture coming in. Then your hair is like another six inches, so <laughs> yeah, it's like you're, you're you like this giant coming over. It's six two, six three, right? Six three, I think. Right? Six three. No, yeah, six three. That's a big one fifty five. Which exactly is like that's the thing too is like I the reason I'm such a pressure fighter is because I know like. Once I'm putting the hands on you, I know eventually you're going to shoot. And I'm a wrestler, you know what I'm saying? And I like jujitsu, so I don't really mind if you shoot. I'm a, like, if I want to keep it up, I'm going to get you off me, hit you with an elbow or knee on the way out, and then we'll still keep striking. But if I want to choke you out, like, you just put yourself into my realm. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I'm always working with the fighters here, telling them to keep that pressure. I think it's it, – people don't realize how exhausting that is. Like, like when you're fighting somebody – and I'll tell you, the first person that really showed me uh, how bad pressure can be, and that was Kane. Like, I, I would train with Kane, and I didn't do much with Kane, obviously, wrestling-wise, but we would, like, do even just the technique sparring before – you know how we do at AK. Um, you know, you, you, you spar around a few rounds before you go in the, the other rooms. Um, and I would go with Kane, and Kane would just be forward the entire time. And I think that in itself is just such a drain because, like, when you're having to back up into Kane, you ha I have to. You know what I'm saying? Like, most strikers, I can kind of keep off and put the pressure on them. With Kane, he's so imposing. You know, it's like I have to back up. And then that pressure just starts, like, taking my cardio away. And then he's landing the strikes, which is going to obviously take the cardio away as well. I wouldn't do it. It's just demoralizing, man. Like, it, you can break people so fast with pressure. And I don't know. I just I, I love I love seeing you do that. Just because, man, it's just such a great strategy to to break people. You know what I mean? And the thing is, is like it it, it seems like the biggest problem with that is people are afraid to get hit. And when you're walking forward, you're you're in the way of you're in the line of getting hit and, and taking a strike. But once you can clear that out of your mind and understand that, okay, who cares? I'm going to move my head. I'm going to try to avoid the strike. Keep my chin down. And if I do get hit. It's okay. It's fine. I'm going to just keep moving forward. When you get to that stage, that's when your level goes from like here to Eight right here. Because, you know, that, that, tena that tenacious attitude and mentality just crushes, you know. And, and then now you're going forward. You're backing people up. They're fighting defensively, which means their power is not as good. You know, they don't have that, that knockout power usually. And, and then, you know, when you're defensive, you're, you know, you're, you're, off your, you know, you're off your game a little bit. So you're not going to be as accurate and as, as perfect Plus, with your timing and stuff. I mean, I'm 6'5". But I don't weigh. I'm 190 at the most I think I've ever been. Um, yeah. I couldn't imagine cutting 30, 35 pounds. I mean, what do you walk around at? It's got to be. Like, no, I probably walk around. Depends. So right now I'm probably like 170, 172. Before this last fight, I was about 187. Um, just depends. You know what I mean? I I, I can get up there, but uh, I like to keep myself when I'm out of camp. I like to keep myself around 175. That's. I mean, I, I couldn't do it. Not that's too bad. Kudos, that's, that's, good. Yeah. that's still thirty pounds. From, yeah. How, how did you get on the Ultimate Fighter? Like, a, like officially? Like, when did you find out about it? When did you have the opportunity? And what was the process like? Like for us, it was the very first season, so I'm sure it was very unique to any other season. But I'm curious, like now, twenty seven seasons in, like how did you how did you find out there was availability and, and apply and and what was that process like of of screening you and stuff? So it's funny. Um, it was almost like I, I don't know how to put it. It was like a the way for me it was kind of like a movie i'm sitting there cutting weight for this professional boxing match in uh little rock my hometown of uh, little rock arkansas it's actually the last time i've ever fought in little rock and uh i'm actually cutting weight i'm cutting weight in the and i'm sitting there in the sauna um just getting ready for this fight and i'm scrolling through instagram and all of a sudden i see a flyer and it says the ultimate fighter undefeated and right and in my uh at the time I was four and oh in my MMA career and I just looked through all the I looked through the uh, the details and it said one forty five, one fifty five and one seventy. And I was like, I can do any of those three weight classes. I, I was I told myself and then I told my girlfriend there at the time she was sitting there in the sauna with me, I told her I was like, This is how I'm going to make it in the UFC. Like this is gonna be what what sets me on the path to the belt. And I remember just from then on, I was like, I was on it. I did everything I had to do. I went and talked to, like, for the first time, I like busted my ass to go get all, all the sponsors I needed to uh, to fund my to fund the trip. And so I flew out there, and the way we did it, um, 
they had uh, you had a ninety second grappling round with like just someone else in in your weight class that they, they just met randomly matched people up, and then you had to do uh, about two to three minutes on the tie pad, and then if you made it past those rounds then you went on to the interviews. And if you made it past the interviews, you were there for the whole week to get like your medicals and background checks done. And then um, after they did all of that, they made uh, like the final cuts. And then from there, we all got sent home. And then they told us, that's when they told us like who actually made the show. And they sent us a camera to like film our home lives and stuff. Oh, wow. They sent you a camera. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So like when they sent us our contract to sign everything, we had like a camera and a bunch of other stuff we had to like uh we had to, that's how and that's how they get the footage for what we're doing at home like before the the show um we had to like go around like film ourselves uh training living you know what i'm saying i had to get my girlfriend at the time my ex-girlfriend and like a bunch of my training partners to film me it was really cool so what what kind of camera did they give you was it like a gopro or, or was it like a normal no, it was a, it was a really really nice camera. Um, it wasn't like you know some like a uh, professional one, but it was just like an, an eight a little HD Samsung camera. Do you still have it? Yes, yeah, we can say. Tell me they didn't take it back when you got to the show. Oh no no no! They unfortunately they took it back. <laughs> oh, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. didn't even get to keep the camera. That uh, no, I wish I wish. Hey, I've gotten quite a few other things since. I'm then, sure. So I'm again. sure you have. What uh what job were you doing at that point that you're glad you'll never go do again? Roofing. Roofing? <laughs> yeah. I, I did that yeah, for about I was a week. Fuck that. For, for my old coach, and I'll never in my life go do that again. That's, that's the one thing that kind of keeps me focused during camp, especially in these UFC fights, is like thinking about going back and have to get on that hot-ass roof. Never again. Never again. Yeah, that's I don't blame crazy. you. I did it for one week after Hurricane Ike hit Houston. Yeah? Because everybody needed a roof. So I thought it'd be a good idea. No. Way too much manual labor. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I, I feel you, buddy. That's crazy. So then <laughs> so then you went to Vegas for the show. And then what was that like? Because like, you had watched the, the, the Ultimate Fighter the seasons before that and, and followed it or not so much? Um, off and on. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I watched, you know, the first season. I probably watched the first 10 seasons, like, you know, all the way through. And then from there, I kind of watched sporadically. I remember the last season I really watched was the Claudia Joanna season because uh, my buddy Andrew, Andrew Sanchez was on it. He ended up winning. And um, it's funny, too. It's like me and my uh, biological mom's husband, we watched that whole season together uh, that summer. And I remember him, like him us talking about, oh, man, he'd be cool to be on The Ultimate Fighter. And then... Um, I remember my, my ex-girlfriend asked me, like, would you ever want to do The Ultimate Fighter? And I was like, hell no. <laughs> yeah. And then I don't know what happened, you know. I just saw it, and I, I the thing was, I saw that it was, under like, ult The Ultimate Fighter undefeated, and just my mindset, when I saw that, I was like, I can beat, I had just beat, like, two other highly touted undefeated prospects, and the way I thought, I was like, man, none of these other dudes have ever, probably ever put themselves in a position yet where they had to fight, like, another undefeated, highly touted, like, number one prospect where they're from. And I've already done that twice. So I've got the mindset that, like, I'm going to just go in there and beat everyone's ass because all these other dudes are going to be afraid to lose, and I'm just not. I don't care. That makes good, sense. Yeah, and then also, if you're going to have those kind of fights, might as well do it on TV, you know? If you're going to fight these guys exactly. anyway, undefeated fighters, might as well go, go get some exposure for it. So how, Exactly. Did y'all stay in the same house? Like, do you know? No, they changed it so many times. Uh, Sorry for all the questions on Ultimate Fighter. I'm just curious because like it's obviously yeah, been a long time since, since or yeah. last change since season you one. Yeah. Something funny. So DC stayed in the house that you stayed in. Oh, did he? Yeah. So like the coaches, the coaches' house for our season was the seat, the house for the first season. Oh, cool. It was, that, pro it was probably still trash. Yeah, yeah. Like walking in, I was like, oh shit, this is the house. Yeah. Leaving, still tearing it up. Uh, yeah. Door knock down. <laughs> so what was it like when you got there and like y'all y'all started the show? Was it what you expected? And 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 what was your mentality when you were doing the show? Because in our season, you know, there was a lot of fighters in season one. You know, and our mentality was just to get in the fight. We didn't really come. You know, it seems like we were kind of more real fighters at that time. And then a few seasons after that, it was more people looking for the show and like trying to be on get TV kind of thing. So what was the mentality yeah. like for you in season twenty seven? Um, I would say most everybody was there to fight. You know what I'm saying? Most everyone was there. 
to 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 take their opportunity to get in the UFC. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, there's a couple guys there for just like you said for the show for the reality aspect of it. But for the most part, we were all there to uh, for this opportunity. We all saw what it could be. We all saw the, the launching platform that this the, uh, this particular season could be with it being with the coaches being who they were, with um, the stipulations of, the, of the, the season being what it was. It was. I think we all, most of us, uh, saw what that was and saw you know that this could turn us into a, into some real stars, and we we were all about it. I mean, don't get me wrong though. Um, I love all the guys from, from my season, you know what I'm saying? We're all really cool. We used to all talk still, but, I mean, you know how life is. We all, you know, everyone drifts apart. But uh, for the most part, you know, I, I love all the guys from the, our season, too. They were all great dudes. Any interesting stories that didn't get shown? Any things that happened in, in, in the house that they didn't uh, air? I'd say probably one of the most interesting stories that they didn't show um, was the fact that, like, so – the day before weigh-ins, me and my opponent for our, our first round fight, we couldn't we couldn't sleep, and so I remember just like we I woke up and he was just sitting there in the living room, and it was like 4 a.m. and uh, at that point none none of the cameramen were there. I don't think any producers were there because we everyone else was asleep, and um, we just like cleaned the house together. <laughs> like, for, like, <laughs> <laughs> for like a good two two and a half hours we just sat there and cleaned the house together just like kind of going on like just barely talking to each other but like i don't know how to put it it was just it was like a weird scenario you know what i'm saying like there was this awkwardness but at the same time like we were both boys before we got in the house so it wasn't like a real thing and then uh i just remember like doing that and then literally like by the time everyone woke up me and him were just kind of on that, like, all right, fuck you. <laughs> that yeah. thing. That's crazy, man. Me and Force used to make protein shakes at like two and three in the morning when the producers were all asleep. I don't know why. We would just always wake up at the same time and go in the kitchen. And I remember he would make like really unhealthy ones. Like he would start out healthy and then he would try to like shock me with what he's putting in and be like a sneaker or a snicker bar in there, like ice cream or something. And like whatever he could <laughs> he find, cool. he would like make it all healthy and then just throw stuff in there and then just blend it. Well, you, you, did you have alcohol in your season? I mean, obviously you did and we saw what oh, happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, y'all did too. Yeah, they're not gonna take that um, away. Yeah, I know that's good TV. Alcohol. Did alcohol have anything to do with the fact y'all were cleaning house at two in the morning? <laughs> no, but you should. I, that's another story I wish they would have shown. So, like after they announced the semifinals, we had like a beer pong tournament. We stayed up till like four in the morning shooting dice. It was crazy. Nice. It's weird they didn't show Everybody that. Was like, everyone that realized their dreams were crushed just decided <laughs> to fucking party. <laughs> God, that must have been some well, interesting, honest conversation. You uh, you got injured in your the quarterfinal fight, right, on the show? Yeah, yeah. What ha- what happened to your ankle? Uh, it was my foot. So I broke the second metatarsal about halfway down my foot. Like I just completely like, snapped it in half with on a head kick. Oh. Damn. I kind of feel bad for the head too, though. You know, <laughs> sucks about your foot, but if you're gonna Dude, break your foot, you know what's crazy is like that happened in the first round of that fight, and then we kept going for the second. And I remember DC sitting there trying to tell me to kick with my left foot, and I'm just like, I, I remember I hit him with a, I hit him with a front kick to the face, and I felt something like jab in my foot, and I was like, that does not feel good, and I just, I completely stopped kicking, and DC, you can hear DC the whole time just screaming at me to kick. And I remember I, I sat down um, in the corner after after the fight, and he's like, why didn't you kick? And I was like, man, my foot is fucking killing me. And then he looked at it, and it's just like completely swollen That's, i can i can i mean i can't understand your pain on that but i will say that the worst pain i've one of the worst pains i felt because you know when you fight you don't feel pain too much right it's you usually feel the no, impact you feel that you know it makes you upset or something or, or mad or angry but but you don't feel the actual pain but for whatever reason speaking of feet uh when chris lieben um started stomping my feet like after he started doing it and i didn't feel it so much and i was like oh who gives a shit like what, what are you going to do with that but then he fractured both of my feet and when oh. the fracture happened it literally yeah it, it felt 
horrible. <laughs> you could feel like it felt like a knife, like in both of my feet, just like, stuck that. there. It was one of the like sharpest pains because you don't feel like you could probably attest this. You don't feel really like sharp pains during a fight. You feel like impact and maybe deep pain, stuff like that. Obviously, fatigue is the worst. Um, but that was the first time I felt like sharp pains. Like I could literally feel them, and I was like, "Oh shit, that's effective." I was remember thinking in my head like, "Fuck, I gotta remember this because like that's an actual effective move to like really take someone off their game." So, so long story short. I think feet are kind of, for whatever reason, I, I can imagine what it you must feel like to have your foot broken because you can feel that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, you can feel other things. Like, like every time, every time I, I like, every time you step, especially with, with what I broke, being that, like, because it's the, so I broke the, like, the left, the, uh, on my left foot, not the big toe, but the toe right next to that. Right. About halfway down my foot so like every time i bounced in my oh, stance man. i could just feel like that like the the jab of, of of like the stinging pain of where the the fracture was just hitting each other over and over again i'm like man what is going on because all that's all i could like like you said you don't ever really feel those stinging pains when you're in a fight because your adrenaline but then like i don't know what it was i just remember and like if you you watch the fight back i just stop, i get real flat footed and just start boxing and like that's I, I've never really felt anything more painful except the time I broke my orbital. That was that was. Pretty oh, I painful. can imagine that. that. Was probably gonna suck. See, it's, it's unfortunate that you're so young because if you were if you were my age. I would have went straight to the the Daniel Sun crane kick from Karate Kid. Like if I were you and I had the broke foot, that would have been my go to move because that was the reason I got into I got into martial arts. Karate that Kid was a movie. Yeah, he doesn't understand. Yeah. He's, he's, he's younger. You don't see, think I know Daniel Larusso. Yeah, so oh, like, yeah, there you. you go. All right, so uh, they have a TV show with him now. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because he he brought up the rap game earlier. Oh yeah. But and then I was like, everybody in our rap game, we are dead now. Yeah. You know, it's like shit, man. We don't, I don't know any of these new rappers. Did so, you Did you yeah, think I'm, about the the I'm a huge, like, I'm a just big music head. I probably listen to some guys that you, you guys used to listen to. Like, Eric B. and Rakim is probably my favorite artist. Who? It's, so, that's actually before us. What? <laughs> yeah, that was before that's, us. I don't even know that, dude. <laughs> Eric B. and Rakim is probably the greatest. Rakim is probably the greatest lyricist of all time. Okay. From, uh, I want to say. Oh, I think I need he's to. from the 80s, like his era. Yeah, that's 80s. what I'm saying. We, well, I mean, we were born in 1980 or 79, but, but no, we're, uh, we're Tupac guys. Okay, okay. See, I'm a big pop fan myself. Okay, good. All right. You can come to Thailand now. <laughs> Speaking of uh, that beer pong and stuff, you did just have a birthday July 5th, right? In the big old uh, 26 years old. Yeah. Fuck. What, is a, yeah. what did you do for your birthday? What does a 26-year-old do now for their birthday? Uh, so I I went back home to Little Rock, you know, big, big fan to go get your, have your birthday in. But I went home to Little Rock, and uh, I threw just – I just threw a bunch a really huge party for my friends. I uh, I rented like a presidential suite in this really nice hotel downtown. I got two two clubs in uh, Little Rock to throw birthday parties for me. Uh, one was a regular club, one was a strip club, and then I just <laughs> took a bunch of like twenty of my friends out, and uh, we had like the VIP experience the whole time. I just pretty much when they all had like they got me like a free tab, so I just had my friends just get like free drinks and everything. It was a great time. Like that was the thing for me. It's like. This is the first time I've really been able to like, uh, like celebrate like anything, like whether it be my fights or my birthday or anything like that, since uh, my career started with all my friends, and I, I kind of just took all the people that uh, have stuck by me and kind of been like supporting me from the time that like I first started this. All the people that that knew that I was going to be able to do this, like that didn't. The, the people that truly believe, like, it wasn't just a dream. Like, it was just a matter of time for me being here. I took all those people, and I just showed them, like, the best time I possibly could. Good, because I'm trying to gauge how we're going to hang out when you get here. So Now we know. Now we know. We so, know. Note taken. Yeah. Duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, yeah. We, uh, yeah, so my birthday was the 5th, and I don't think we stopped till the 7th. So. Nice. Wow. I ought to be 26 wow. again. So you're hungover now. <laughs> no, you. no. I actually sparred, dude. For my for the weekend I had to walk in and spar Islam Makachev and Khabib today, I felt pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, Khabib's getting ready. So I mean, he's only got was it less than two months now? Yeah, September seventh. Yeah, he's got two months. Two months till uh, yeah. This this Monday or this Sunday is two months. So how is it training alongside guys like that, getting ready for your fight? I mean, your 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 training partners are like, well, especially Khabib. The, the best fighter in the world so it's, it's in that weight class so like how, how is that 
So I mean, I'm not gonna lie. When I first got here to AK, it was a little like it was it was like a little mind blowing, you know. Uh, starstruck is probably the best word for it, you know. I'm like I remember I'm in there. I remember the very first time Hob asked me to spar for Beeb. I'm like, oh shit, I'm about to spar the champ. But now I remember coming in today and it's like. The the one thing on my mind is like I want to go give Habib the grounds, you know what I'm saying? Like I fi- I feel like I finally turned that leap from like being this dude in the gym and like oh my god I'm training with Habib I'm training with DC I'm training with Kane to being this dude that's like no nah, I'm 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 with these guys like I I am in the UFC I'm a UFC vet I'm a UFC star people want to see me so I, like I feel feel like I finally have my own swagger in there I have my own like groove I'm not. Not afraid to go in there and spar with the B. I'm not afraid to go in there and spar with these guys. Like I want to give them the work. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I want to see now. Yeah, man, that brings me back, and it's it's like so, it's so crazy to see that nothing's changed technically as far as like that that whole thing with AKA. Because like I mean, I was there. Jesus Christ, it was like when I was just getting in the UFC. That was man. That was a long. I can't even know how many years ago that was. It was a long time ago, and it was the same thing for me because we had uh, John Fitch, we had Koscheck. Jake Shields was coming in from San Francisco. So, like, when I was getting ready for, for fights, I mean, training with Fitch, Koscheck, and Shields, that, that was – all three of those guys were in the top five of my entire career. So it's like when I was switching off with those guys, you know, and whoever I was fighting, it didn't matter. There was no one I was going to fight that was better than the guys I was training with the gym. And it was like that that was a confidence builder for me, switching off between Koscheck and Fitch and Koscheck and Fitch for, for three or four rounds, and then I'm preparing to fight somebody who's ranked, like, 10th or 12th or 15th or whatever the case you know and it's like now with you it's like you're training with Khabib and like I mean there's just no one better you could fight so it's like you're you know th- that's the one thing about AK that I love is like your training partners are the best fighters in the world and then like there's nothing better for your confidence and and technique obviously getting ready for a fight than that oh without a doubt you know what I'm saying and then the thing is not only do we have guys like Khabib but we have guys that no one even knows like your boy Salim that's yeah. my he's my number one sparring partner you know what I'm saying he's the dude I would without a doubt Salim has got me is, is the number one dude that's got me ready for every single one of my fights that I've been in at AKA and I, I, I gotta thank you for what you did with him because without him man I would not be the, the striker and the dude the not even a striker but the, I would have the fighting mentality that I do now since being at, at, at AKA without training with him dude how crazy is that guy he's, I mean, he's just a fighter of through and through, huh? He's younger than you. He's younger than me? Yeah. Yeah, he's young, man. He's Salim's like 24 maybe now, the latest. There's no way he's 26 for sure. Who? Salim, there's no way. Oh, yeah, he's, there's he's, there's he's, no he's probably way. 23, Salim 24. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's 23, 24. He was a kid when he came to Yeah, us. he was 18 with us. We haven't been open that long. Damn. The, the thing is with that Salim, man, good. Salim would yeah. train his ass off, and, and he would do – I mean, he would do MMA training with us at, at, at 11, and then he would do Muay Thai in the evenings at four and and he'd be sparring almost two times a day we'd have to slow him down air and then he was ta- yeah then air down at five then he was taking muay thai fights against thai fighters locally for fun on the weekends so he he was just going out fighting muay thai fights almost every like every couple yeah. weeks like just for fun and like full full-blown pro muay thai in the stadiums and that was what he did just to get you know that was his so i mean the amount of like he's a great example and what you're saying is a great testament to that he's a great example of how well you can pre- get prepared and, and increase your i guess your career when you're just fighting and training all the yeah. time that's all he did was train and fight so he probably had six years of experience in three years you know as far as training goes because he was just fighting and training every single day and see that's funny that you say that and that the like what you said earlier about like me not really having a traditional like martial arts or striking background um that's essentially what i did for about three years living in that gym in st louis i was when i was uh as an amateur dude i was fighting almost every weekend whether it be boxing kickboxing mma muay thai like i found like i just wanted to fight just like him you know what i'm saying like i don't know what it was uh i rarely ever took damage and you know as an amateur you can just fight all the time you know what i'm saying so it's and then, uh, like the kickboxing rules as an amateur in, in Missouri, there weren't no there were no shin pads or or headgear or anything. I was fighting full pro rules essentially. So it was like that that was I, I understand that, I, and I feel like that's one hundred percent how I how I was able to develop my uh, 
my um, striking and that, that pressure style is just like you said when you're when you're not afraid to get hit when you've been in there so so many times you can just keep walking forward even if they do hit you it, it doesn't affect you you keep walking forward that just, like you said that demoralizes people and I think just like you said I think the that the just fighting having that experience in there that's the only the only way you truly build that yeah did did you tell Salim you're gonna be on the show. Oh no, I didn't actually. I should have. What? How have you not been bragging? We got to get we got to get uh, Salim on the show, man, because yeah. his English has gotten crazy good since he's been to AK. His English has gotten really good, dude. Salim's my boy. It's yeah. funny. He's, he's the funniest, one of the funniest guys in the gym, too. Yeah, yeah we miss him for he's sure, so, man. Yeah, he's, I bet you guys do. He's he's a real dude. Like I said, he's probably he's one been one of the biggest assets to uh, to help me like grow here. It's crazy. He got like a Bellator contract. I was talking to Hava about it a while back, but like over a year ago and just hasn't had a fight. And now I think I he's... I wonder why. I don't know. Is he still with Bellator? Do you know why he hasn't had a fight? Because I, I was asking Hava and they just said just, they had, haven't booked him. I heard it had something to do with visa issues, but I, from what I understand, he's got something coming up in like September, October in uh, Thackerville, Oklahoma. Yeah, cool, man. We- so you will be seeing Salim here soon on, on a Bellator card. And... Uh, well, actually, you will be seeing him murder someone here soon. Yeah, yeah. you haven't been you know, waiting for should, that. <laughs> when that dude gets goes in the cage in the cage room to spar, it's like it's like he's he's getting ready to go fight. So I can't imagine what it's going to be like when the when the bright lights are on. He's he just I know he's the kind of dude that's just going to perform. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's a showman. <laughs> yeah, is he still doing the cartwheel, kick, jump, spinning back, flying fist? shit he makes up in midair he taught me dude he taught me how to cartwheel kick now i hit people with it <laughs> it's crazy man because like we he left and and we sent you know obviously the headquarters and I, I was just waiting to see him compete and, and and just see the the mess that he creates you know like like in his career and in a good way oh. and and like it's nothing's happened because he hasn't been able to fight and like seeing somebody fight every weekend here spar every day yeah. and then go to ak headquarters and i don't see anything for like a year i'm just like fuck man what is he doing like like how is he getting by not being able to fight so it's like he's been pent up for like a year and like i think he's gonna he's gonna shake the world man i think he's got a lot of potential and he's so young like you said i, I forget how old he is but he's got to be low 20s like 22 maybe at the most he's 20 25 25 is he 25 okay so he's 25 like, our statistician oh, wow. Mr. but the Brick, thing is what? i mean he's got the world that is in his hands man he really does. He's gonna he's gonna no, make an impact. I uh, that's that's what we all talk about at the gym is like when are we gonna be able to finally see this killer unleashed on someone? You know what I'm saying? I'm just glad it's finally happening here soon. Yeah, that's gonna be I can't wait, man. And what'd you say, Thackerville, Oklahoma? I'm pretty sure uh, we were talking today, and someone said that they I think it's not because they have a they have a, a card in Thackerville this weekend, and I think it's gonna be the next one. I think and I think that's in September or October. And uh, they were saying that that's kind of when they're looking to fit him in. That's awesome, man. Yeah, you mentioned real quick just that. So from being on Ultimate Fighter, I can attest to like how it. So when you first get in the UFC, it's obviously an exciting experience when you get your first UFC fight and and you know that you've kind of arrived to the UFC. Being on the Ultimate Fighter, it kind of gets spread out a little bit. So it's like it's it's hard to realize where that moment was where you finally made it because you're on the Ultimate Fighter, you're training, you're having exhibition fights, then the exhibition fights aren't really fights, but they are. Then you get in the UFC and you have a fight. So when was your moment where you like knew you arrived to the UFC and you were just like you, you took that long shower where you're just like Oh, like that relief, you know, and like just just thinking about the, you know, w- where you're at and and how you got there. So don't get me wrong, you know, like winning, like I I've had um three and one in the UFC, and I so like all my fights they've been like they've been good, and you know I won the fifty thousand dollar bonus in my debut, but I'm not gonna lie, I don't necessarily feel like I truly arrived in the UFC. And like, kind of made my mark until this last fight, this Wyman fight. Um, just He's because, legend. like, you know, and there's still doubts, but every time I fought, you know, there was like, oh, you know, I didn't, I made, or I missed weight at 45. I lost against Trezana. And then my, uh, my debut, you know, everyone's like, oh, I was just an ultimate fighter guy. But I feel like this last, fu- this last fight, just the way I was able to come out and, um, and, and just like dominate from bell to bell, I think I really finally like showed people like, all right, this kid's for real. Like this kid, uh, not only can he go out there and hang with these veterans, but like he's a problem. Like he's he's dangerous. And I think that's that's uh, 
that's like kind of the moment for me to like solidify myself. So the biggest thing for me too is like after every single one of my fights, I always had guys chirping at me on Twitter. Oh, hmm. Someone was always coming at me. Someone was always trying to call me out, yada, yada, yada. But after this last one, not a single person had me in their mentions. And I have, a feel, I have a feeling it's because they saw what I did and they know it can happen to them. Nice. Yeah, and you're talking about uh, an OG that, you know, had a good career, yeah, man. Wyman. And, and not only that, but, you know, when he left a while back, before he came back to fight you, I mean, he, he won a, a lot of his fights. I mean, it was something like six of his last eight fights or something. something like so, I mean, that, yeah. it, it wasn't like he was losing and like and, and was kind of forced out and, and didn't have any other yeah, options. I mean, his this, last this is a guy who's he's, he's done a lot of yeah, good yeah, stuff, he, man. It was, was a, a tough fight. He was on a three-fight win streak before yeah, he left. That's good, man. And then he had just beat Isaac Valley Flag in his last fight. And I think um, his last loss was to TJ Grant, and that was like a number one contender Yeah, he's fight. a tough fighter. Yeah, that's so, true. Uh, for me, it was like it was a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know a lot of people say, "Oh, he was out for however long." But when I saw Matt Wyman on the on the contract, like that was a big deal to me because it's like I watched that guy. Um, my co- like I remember my coaches, tons of people that you know I know that are huge in the sport. It's like they've watched this dude, and for them, this is like I remember a bunch of my friends, everyone like. For them, this was like that moment, you know, where they get to see, like, all right, you know, can he can he go in there and fight like with these real dudes? And so, for our, my friends and my family to see me put on the performance I did, like, not only did it, it validate myself for me, but it validated myself for them. Like, man, like I think, like, like I am going to have a long career. I am going to be a star in the sport. That's awesome. What's your what's your thing to reflect? Like, what do you do to reflect? Like, I know I just talked about a shower. You are probably looking at me like, what the fuck is he talking about a shower? No, I take long showers. All that the time. that's like my thing. Like after a UFC fight, you, you take a shower to clean up, and that's like my my thing to just sit there and reflect. Like, wow, I can't believe you know. And I reflect the fight and what it took to get there. Be it a win or a loss, it's either a good reflection or a bad reflection. What's like your time where you just kind of like after the Wyman fight, where you just sat down and were like, fuck, man, I just I just demolished a, a veteran in the sport in the UFC. That's funny. I uh, so like it's almost immediately, man. Like I get out of the cage and it's like I have my little, I have my time with um, with uh, my family and everything. Walk into walk into the back, and by the time I get to the back, my mind's just racing, thinking about all the things I could have did better. I'm yeah. sitting there in the medical chair, and me, Ron, and Rosendo are, are like talking, and they're telling me all the good things I did, and I'm like, Nah, man, see. For me, I'm like I, I was like I, and I told him I was like, man, I could have I could have just let that dude up, and I, if I would have believed in my striking, I could have let him up. I probably could have got him out of there in the first or the second, but I was too content with like with just winning where I because I was I was on top of him, I'm raining down ground and pound, I'm winning. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm winning that, but I could have like I could have got him out of there, and like that's that's the kind of guy I am. Like I immediately. Think about all the things, all the mistakes I made, all the all the ways I could have done better, all the ways I could have have like maybe finished it faster, or if I got the decision, maybe all the ways I could have gotten the finish, or the the moments where I know I told myself, man, I'm tired, so I pulled off a little bit, and then instead of going, instead of just biting down and going forward, you know what I'm saying? That's that's the the things I think about, like, and that's like literally immediately after the fight. And it's funny because like Ron and Roe are sitting there like trying to tell me like, dude, you just had the best performance I've ever seen. Like, enjoy it. And I'm like, but how? Good attitude to have. Yeah, that's good, man. <clears throat> so what's good to be that way for sure? I was gonna say. So who do you want next? And you can't say I'll fight anybody because we know you will. You gotta. You don't necessarily. You don't have, have anything right booked now. or anything, do you? Yeah, like what's next for you? Who do you no, want? No, I like don't that? have anything booked. We're looking. We're definitely looking at uh, at a couple of guys. Um, my management team is looking at getting me back sometime in October, maybe uh, late September. But uh, two guys that have popped up on my radar: Matt Frivola and uh, Jared Gordon. I think um, I match up really well with both of them, and I also think we're both kind of near each other when it comes to uh, where our careers are at and I think I, I think it's a great matchup for either of us for like I think either one of those guys is a great matchup I think we both I think the, the three of us all like to come to fight so you know no matter who um, who I were to fight out of those two it, it really doesn't matter to me but I think those two guys uh, specifically like look like the best matchups right now cool nice 
It's awesome, man. Yeah, you, you, it's 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 good, man. <laughs> I mean, you got you. you it's, it's so I'm so envious of being young in the career that's like you, saying. right we, in the UFC and three and one, and like you know, it's like yeah, that's most so people cool. we have aren't this young. You might yeah. be our youngest guest, right? How old's I'm Walker? Not, I don't know. Besides him, well, Manel's twenty. But they're the same situation, kind of. Walker's yeah. had a few yeah. fights in UFC too. So I know we talked a lot about fighting. So just real quick before I let you go, um, just for the people that's wanting to get to know the violent Bob Ross personally, I got to ask you a few other questions outside of fighting. So what, what do you do for fun? Like what, what is what does uh, Luis Pena do for for relaxing and just uh, get your mind off fighting and stuff? So I'm a, I'm a huge gamer. I like to I like to play a lot of video games. You know what I'm saying? I got a, a, a Nintendo Switch and a PlayStation Four and a Nintendo DS. I'm constantly on on uh, I don't even know what on the are. games. I got Switch. I'm on, and like that's the thing too is like I'm not playing just like sports games and stuff like that. Like I'm a huge nerd. Like I play everything. Like my favorite stuff is like Skyrim and The, the Witcher stuff like that. I uh, play a lot of Call of Duty. Um, that and then like so I just bought a new car and I put two twelves in it. I'm a big music head. So like I, I honestly I like just going around riding my car and driving my car and uh, listening to music stuff like that. I gotta ask what kind of car and what kind of twelves. I come. I used to be commercial sales, car audio. I'm just curious, what kind of car and what kind of twelves? <laughs> Don't ever tell anybody uh, that yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was an old job of mine. I, I, it's an, <laughs> it's an, I think it's an 08 BMW uh, 350i series. Nice. And uh, I got two JL 12s in the back. W what? Sevens? What kind of JLs? No, no, no. The, yeah, yeah. JL audios. Yeah, I'm I know. Not sure. Well, I there's, think there's, there's W0, W1, W3, W7. I think they're W seven. Is the magnet real huge on the back? Yeah. Okay, then yeah, probably W seven. That's those are nice, real nice. Anyway, sorry, just I, you know, I used to do it back I in the day. And all I know is when I roll up anywhere, everyone's head turns. <laughs> nice man. Exactly. And what about what about TV shows? What are you into? Do you watch much TV or? Uh, I do. I mean, not nearly as much as I used to, but I, I do watch a lot of TV. So like, I watch TV here and there. Um, I, I'd say probably my favorite TV show right now is It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's probably one thing I always I just always turn on and just to laugh at. And um, I've always been a big uh, King of the Hill fan just because it reminds me of growing up in Arkansas. <laughs> that's Texas where we grew up. <laughs> really? That's awesome. Yeah. Like, I I tell people all the time, it's like, because I, I know a lot of people, like a lot of my friends just don't get it. And I'm like, man, if you grew up in the South, King of the Hill is probably like your favorite show just because it it it's, it reminds me so much of my childhood. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's so sick. <laughs> Those good shows. And then finally, uh, the last question is, when are you going to come to Thailand and train at AK Thailand and take a vacation and and enjoy some time off? I was actually thinking sometime this winter would be not, would be the perfect time to come down. I uh, I don't really like. It's not. I'm not. It's not that I'm not close to my family or anything. I just don't do a lot of traveling like that at all. So like, I'm always free, and I've all like. I think uh, Matt and I don't like the cold, so the winter time sounds like a perfect time to come in and uh, enjoy see Thailand. But I've never been. I've never been to Asia before, actually either. Nice. You'll so love it here, like man. A, that's uh, why we conveniently like make it. Bucket list. That's why we conveniently make it uh, about training. So it's officially work for you guys that want to come out here. It's not necessarily okay. a vacation. You can <laughs> you can say you got to work and then come out here for training, and then all of a sudden you can see this exactly. amusing, uh, beautiful place. Exactly. So yeah, man, we look forward to having you out here sometime, man. I think you're gonna like it, and you can kind of see where uh, where Salim came up at. Hopefully, Salim can even come out here. That'd be sweet. He said he yeah. wants to come back eventually here too, sometime soon. But Hav uh, may come back. You said Hav, yeah. Hav's tough, man, because he's got so many fighters yeah. that he's always getting ready. But, uh, yeah, we'll love to have you out here, man. You would love training here. We can take the boat out to the islands. Good food. Dude, I'd love to come out, man. Um, I just – just uh, just seeing what Salim is able to do and seeing, like, the way he is, like, I know that's something I have to do is make it out there just, just to be able to experience y'all's training, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think it's I, – I think – not only that, but I think my style really, really would mesh well with yours. You know, we have very, very similar body styles, especially for the weight class we both fought in. Um, I think I can learn a lot from you. You know what I mean? I think it'd be just, I think it'd be perfect for me. I'm old, man. <laughs> I, my, I, I give you old school advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll teach you how to wall walk. Uh, yeah, I can. Because <laughs> that's his thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, man. Well, hey, it's awesome having you on the show. And, uh, man, I appreciate you taking the time out. And, uh, yeah, great conversation, man. It brings me back. So I, it was like a nice reflection or reflecting time for me to kind of like 
man, I remember when I was where you were, you know, like just getting in the UFC, having a few fights, being at AKA. So it's like, for me, this is like a, a cool reminiscent podcast. So yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Cool. I appreciate it. Real. Yeah. Like, thanks for uh, coming on, man. Especially from a guy like you, like that I've watched, like I was, I was a huge Mike Swick fan, you know, the Swick team was like, thanks, that's, man. That's the thing, you know what I mean? Like I remember all that. So like <laughs> coming from a guy like you, that means a lot. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm loving watching your fights too, man. And, and I see the sky is the limit for you. So it's going to be great to see where you're going. Man, everyone that's been a guest on the podcast has done quite well. So mm. you're in good hands now, man. You got you got the podcast vibes. Hey, I, uh, I intend to keep that keep that ball rolling for y'all, then. Yeah, it's the opposite of the Madden curse. Are you are you old enough to know hey, that? Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I trust me. I know the Madden curse. I know the Madden curse. Complete opposite. Yeah, being Michael, Vick's, Michael Vick's probably the, uh, the worst defender. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Peyton Hillis. He he's changing oh, tires the year yeah, after that. I do, I, yeah, I remember Peyton Hillis. Yeah, That's nobody does. Cousin, that dude was from Arkansas too. Cause, oh, uh, no, I feel I, bad. I remember that one really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, we'll let you go. So thanks a lot again, and uh, we'll stay in touch and tell Salim we said hi. All right, Mike. I appreciate it once again. Thanks for having me on. No, most definitely. I'll let Salim know. I'll see you tomorrow, actually. All right, buddy. Good luck with your training, and we'll be watching you fight later, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. All right, man. Appreciate take care, buddy. It. All right, man. What a what a cool uh, experience for me going back down memory lane. You yeah. know, pretty uh, pretty similar paths y'all took. If Very. you think about it, you know, like it's not even like. I mean, obviously, he trains with Salim. I had Kostek and Fitch. I mean, there's there's differences as far as like, you know, the names of the fighters and things like that. But dude, like the actual experience is almost like exact. It's crazy. It's crazy. Same age, same amount of fights in the UFC. Training at AKA, getting ready. You know that that. You know, I can I can feel that motivation and hunger he has. You know, like he's he got a good now, attitude too. He so. just now had that Wyman fight and got you know over that hump of like, okay, I'm here, and like he's still putting pressure on himself and he wants you know, it, man, I, it's it's cool, man. Yeah, hopefully, man, when he gets here, we'll show him a good time, obviously. Yeah. But I think he'll show us a good time. He's I really like that guy, so I'm glad he came on. That's a cool thing about having the show and 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 bringing these guys on that, you know, before well before his his you know obviously he just had a couple of fights in the UFC so I've seen him fight but I didn't know anything about him you yeah. know like as far as nobody does just from Celine or from uh, Javier and and watching his fight so it's cool like not only opening him up to everyone else where they can see who he is and, and what he's about but being here firsthand talking to him it's cool for me man being able to like yeah. meet these guys and and see their personalities and he's you know, he's a good dude man and like I, I wish the best for him and it was cool i think we we got a lot of good information out of him that that uh kind of let us know who the real violent bob ross is yeah a lot of non-fight related stuff too which is what i like so speakers uh, good. You, you had your little field day over there yeah man i haven't talked to speakers and I was if, a salesman at the speaker surplus store. I was the assistant commercial sales manager. Oh, don't ever tell people that, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I knew, oh, my God, after you said that long title that you had at the whatever you just called it, I knew when he started talking about it, you were going to be like, well, was that the RJ74 model okay, that look, was like you don't exactly understand. this size? You don't understand. He was even like, dude, man, I it's don't care fucking speaker in my car. He knows. He knows. If he would have got the w zeros, that are <laughs> There bullshit. you go again, dude. I'm telling you, buddy, those are kind of rare pretty expensive they're professional i mean you have to yeah, fuck off anyway <laughs> it's okay man that was a year of my life doing that so dude, i'm telling hey it was good to see you have your highlight of the podcast dude that was you my could, highlight where you of could the shine uh, and anybody sorry, I wasn't that's on the listening as long as they have jw 047s or whatever yeah, they can hear go. all this there great conversation oh, bring up fitch and cost you gonna name drop again <laughs> I name drop people. You name drop speakers. Yeah. <laughs> Car audio. They're not speakers anymore. Oh my god! All right. Anyway, well. So anyway, that was good, man. Good conversation. Yeah, it's it's cool that uh, he's a gamer because like you know, what's funny is like, dude, there's so many fighters in a gaming. I know he said it in a way like, I know this is crazy, but I'm a gamer. I'm like, no, it's not. Like every fighter's a game. Like everybody that age, man. I I was I played games when I was a fighter. It's like when you're a fighter, you're trying to get your mind off things. And I, I grew up in Texas. I was like, I actually went outside, unlike kids of today. You know, we, we went you, outside. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like, no. there was, like, grass and, like, animals and stuff. It wasn't like today where, you you know, you, you're a kid and you just sit inside playing video games all day for the most part. But, uh, yeah, that's what I did as a, as a kid, obviously, you know. And uh, What's I still got into video games. Call of Duty, I was playing all kinds of games in my career. And even when you were here, when I was getting ready for uh, my last fight, I was playing like Grand Theft Auto and stuff because it just gets you out of like yeah. the world, well, you, the, the real world. And you get, but when people do it for fourteen hours a day, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. And what's a Nintendo Switch? I have no idea. He he named all kinds of stuff I never heard of. 
All I'm thinking about is the VR that Johnny Walker's bringing over. Oh, yeah. Is the he, PS4 is he back today? VR. Yeah, he came back. I Are think he's back today. Tonight? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's not like we're going to have a strip club and a, a regular club and a penthouse suite. and all that. So we might as well play VR like the kids. So Virtual reality? Yeah. So anyway, yeah, good podcast and uh, good guests. And hopefully he'll keep uh, keep in touch and get out yeah, here I and have some will. fun. be cool if he comes in the winter. Or his winter. What's well, perfect for him because he doesn't like cold weather. Yeah. And winter, obviously, in America is summer for us. It's, it's peak time. So if he fights in October, maybe come in November. It'd be perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right. So a big shout out to our sponsors, June U, Starfish Concept. Always a big sponsor of the gym, supporter. And uh, also uh, AK Thailand. Uh, another thing to note for, for you guys that are watching the show that are thinking about coming to AK Thailand or, or possibly coming, it's not just fighters. And, and I think that's a question we get more than any question is, uh, you know, do, can I go to your gym? They think that it's not even open to the public. And, and they think that it's like, uh, you know, you have to be a fighter or like a, a serious uh, definitely Look, we signed person. up to... Uh Kids. four-year-old twins yeah so i mean the majority of our guests at ak thailand are not fighters they're they're everyday people that come here that have been watching us on social media and they want to just come get the experience um we have a comedian in now who who who, who tours the, the country doing comedy they came here just to get away and have fun and train and, and fighting and, and she actually wants to fight it's a female yeah. she actually wants to fight so yeah we, we get all types of people in here and and you know so definitely to answer your questions uh, you don't have to be a fighter, and you don't have to be some crazy I'm here. athletic person. I mean, I, Mark works there. Look at him. Yeah, I'm crazy athletic. Just How many not times a have you trained in your life? You could, you can hold on one hand, probably. Zero. Yeah. I don't need hands. Yeah. yeah. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, and we have guests that uh, have the same experience as Mark here, and they have a great time. So anyway, if you <laughs> wow. need more information about the gym, this we have. Conclusion: Just bash on Mark, huh? <laughs> nice little, nice little commercial for you right here. Ready? You want to bring in the commercial? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, then wait, when they wait. Connect, and that was the commercial. Then we... Go ahead. All right. Good commercial, huh? <laughs> bring it in. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you next time. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. The great Mike Swick. He's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here AKA Thailand is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. I'm telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on.